Hello, hello, it's Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sonny Melendrez Show, and every week we strive to bring you entertainment and inspiration through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and it's all delivered with lots of enthusiasm. And I cannot wait to introduce you to my special guest today. We're brought to you by Ideal Precision Roofing in San Antonio. And, you know, we talk a lot about uh, hail damage and storm damage, and a lot of times homeowners don't even know that they've got this kind of damage, and maybe they learn from a neighbor down the street. But so many people are now talking about the great service and the great roof they got from Ideal Precision Roofers on the Nextdoor.com network. In fact, if uh, you've had your roof done by Ideal Precision Roofing, please share with your neighbors on next door. Let them know about the process and how easy it was. Because the first thing that happens is when you make that phone call or if you go to the website and fill out the contact information, you're going to get a free inspection. From there, our expert will come out and literally find out exactly what is going on with your roof. Take pictures, go up on the roof, and then, if necessary... Uh, set the wheels in motion for you with your insurance company. And within days, you'll have the peace of mind of a new roof from the premier roofing company here in San Antonio. Ideal Precision Roofing. Visit our website at idealprecisionroofing.com or call 210-485-1553. That's 210-485-1553 for Ideal Precision Roofing. And now, on with the show! Well, my guest today is the disruptive growth designer. Stephanie Scheller is, wow, she's a renaissance woman. I mean, it's amazing. She is like five in one. And wait till you see and find out exactly how she got to be that designer. And and Stephanie, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sunny. I am so excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) You and I uh, met. You want to tell her how we met? Oh, okay. (laughs) So, um... I was uh, I was stalking you for a, for a while. Um, I had this goal to meet Sunny Melendrez, and I actually went to my networking group and I said, "Guys, I want to meet Sunny Melendrez. Does anyone here know Sunny Melendrez?" And like two people were like, "Oh, I know him." I was like, "Would you please do an introduction?" <laughs> and uh, so they they did an introduction. We we got together. I think we had coffee at like a Panera or something. Yes. And, um, and just hit it off from there. Like I you know I was looking for you to give me some help, some guidance with my speaking because I wanted a speaking coach and. You were the person I'd picked that I wanted to coach, so and you were kind enough to say yes. And not only that, but I remember I was hosting the uh, the TEDx event here in San Antonio. That's right, uh, one of them. And uh, I, I saw a text real early in the morning because I was on Twitter, and, and you just kind of tweeted out, um, "So excited, just like today, you're right. so excited you're going to, to a TEDx, uh, work it." Right. <laughs> so when I went on stage, because I knew who it was, but when I went says, I said, there's Stephanie Schiller in the audience, and uh, where are you? Because I read your tweet, right? right? And everybody applauded and everything else. So one year to the date, mm-hmm. you're in the audience. Mm-hmm. A year later, you're now on the stage. Right. And I'm introducing you. At the, at the, uh, at TEDx, the TEDx event. speaker. Yes, Isn't that, that something? Was fa- you know, so it is funny. So I don't know if you know, but going to the TEDx event was my backup plan to meet you. So I asked my group if I could ah, meet you. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and then and then I was like, all right, just, so just in case no one else knows him, right, I'm going to buy, I know he's emceeing, I'm going to buy a ticket and go to the TEDx event. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm impressed. Uh, and and it's, it's by no accident that uh, here we are uh, two, three years later, and uh, you yeah. have not only... Uh, growing your speaking uh, ability, but also your your business. Now, mm-hmm. tell me, what is a, a disruptive growth designer? <laughs> so we, I'm all about doing things differently, right? Disruptive, because if we keep doing things the same old, same old, we get the same old results. Right. And right now the results in business are pretty abysmal, right? Like you almost have better odds going to Vegas to be successful in business. Yeah. Um, and so – I look at it as we need to do things a little bit different. If we want to really give people the chance to be successful in business, we have to start disrupting their way of thinking. We have to get them to grow quicker 
because right now what happens is they they end up in this like this bog and they can't grow fast enough and they expend all their energy just trying to figure out what not to do by the time they figure it out they're you know they're out of energy to actually grow the business and then the designer portion all right so we're all about growing your business differently and the designer portion is we actually put on events so i'm an event producer and not an event coordinator, right? Event coordinators. Not like a media weddings. planner. Right. Yes, yeah, exactly. No, we don't. People come to me all the time. So, Stephanie, can you put on my event? No, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I do is we, d- we say, okay, we want to put on this event. This is the theme. This is the takeaway. These are the speakers we're going to bring in who are going to get us to this, this takeaway. Right. I'm going to work with them to help design their content, right? A lot of times our speakers are creating content from scratch, stuff they've never delivered anywhere else. Mm. Um, like perfect example, we got a speaker coming up for our big event in January. And when he originally came to me, he's a Hollywood producer. So he's actually produced – I mean he helped produce Survivor, um, Judge Judy's marketing. He's done um, The Voice, This Is Us. I mean he's done massive stuff. And he's here in San Antonio. No, he's in – we're flying him oh, in for this. Oh, I got you. Okay. Right? So, so he came to me. He goes, hey, I want to talk about branding. And I said, well, I can get branding by Googling it. <laughs> I was like, what I want to know, all of your marketing – creates raving fans. It creates movements, right? It moves people to action in a way that most small business owners have no idea how to do. I want you to do that. And he goes, well, I don't really have a talk on that. I was like, I'll help you put one together. So we designed this two-hour workshop Mm. on how to create marketing that creates movements. We're calling it Five Steps to Phenomenal, right? So that's what I go find the speaker. And if they don't have the content I want, I help them make it. Because they've got the knowledge. Right. They've got the goods. They've got the experience. It's just a question of of putting it together. Putting it in the right order. Yes, exactly. Now, do you have people that maybe uh, have a fear of speaking and you have to kind of overcome that? Um. Not not usual. I did have someone a couple of years ago who did have a, a little bit of a fear of speaking, and I worked with him a lot on, on that. He had a really great story. He was one of our opening keynotes, and mm-hmm. I wanted the story to be told because it was a really great overcoming adversity story. Sure. Um, and so I worked with him to develop the story and, and develop his public speaking skills. A lot of times we're working with actual professional speakers who have been on stage multiple times, who have done – you know, huge things, right. accomplished huge things. So a lot of times I don't run into that anymore, although I, I did used to run into that a lot. I can imagine. All right, let's talk about your story. Yeah. Uh, little Stephanie, growing up, <laughs> what kind of a kid were you? Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> the answer I give you and the answer my mom might give you. Because you come be- from a big family, right? <laughs> I do. There are seven kids, two parents. Parents are still together. Kids still all love each other. Um, we get together for thanks. We get together for Thanksgiving, right? And oh my gosh, so much laughter, so much fun. Um, uh, we're all getting grown and either off to college or with jobs now, but we all, you know, we get along and growing up, I was kind of, a I wasn't kind of, I was like, I was such a rebel, like did not want to, I was so, I threw the math book at my mom. At you were disruptive. Point. I was <laughs> perfect. You were a d- disruptive designer. <laughs> I was. I was, right? But I do miss I was homeschooled for the most part. And uh, I homeschooled all the way to college. And I remember at one point my mom was trying to teach me something. But I was like the little girl who was like, she was like, okay, so two times two equals four. Okay, so three times three equals, and my answer, six. Because three and three, right, 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 right yes. and I argued with her on this for yeah. like a half hour, yeah. apparently, right. Yeah. So like that was like literally like that was Stephanie growing up. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, you you get old. I mean, did you actually have what were your interests back then? I mean, did you have, did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? Well. So yes and no. I, my interest were horses. Was horses. Um, I went to school for horses. My degree is actually, actually equine business and facility management, which is a very fancy way of saying I was going to go run a horse barn. Mm. Um, but I couldn't get a job that would pay me enough money to pay off my loans. So plan B was marketing, and that's where I ended up here. But I do look back and. I did have this penchant for being on stage and performing, and I do a lot of public speaking and a lot of public appearances here. Sure. Um, my team makes me get on stage at all of our events, which always, like, I tried to not put myself on stage one year at the retreat, and they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> you have to get on stage. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I just remember uh, 
we my parents had taken us to like this little like functional kid sized gold mine town in the Colorado Rockies, mm. and we were there with my cousins. And uh, I was the youngest at the time. I was only like five, four, five, six years old. And of course, all the older kids run ahead and they all get all the cool. You know, my sister was the store manager, the storekeeper, and someone else was the sheriff, and someone else was the. And the only thing that was left was the church. So I got to be the pastor. So at first, I was like super mad about this because I wanted to be the storekeeper because the yeah. storekeeper had like, you know, all this cool stuff. And, and I was, so I was super upset. And finally, I was like, all right, well, if I've got to be the pastor. I am going to be the best darn pastor. <laughs> and so I get there behind this pulpit, and I and like didn't matter if anyone was in the church. Yeah. I was preaching. Good for I you. I mean, and loudly to the point where the sheriff came and threw me in jail, quote unquote, right? But the jail was right next to the church. Yeah. And there was, a, there was bars, a barred window into the church so the prisoners could listen to the sermon. So I just kept preaching from jail. Oh, Wow. <laughs> But how great! You were five years old. Five, yeah, five or six, super yeah. young. Like unbelievable. So clearly, I had some kind of penchant for this. So, at what point? Because I know that that your family is involved in, in taekwondo, mm-hmm. and and you I think you all have black belts. We're, yeah, some variety, yeah. right? I, I have a black belt, but I but I bought it at uh, Macy's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and mine came from Korea. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, tell me about that interest. Um. So. It was kind of funny. So I'd always wanted to get into martial arts, but because I had a horse, my mom was like, look, you can either do a horse or martial arts. Like, you don't have time for two hobbies. And so I always chose the horse because, like, what, you're not going to go sell your horse so you can go do martial arts. So I always chose the horse. And when I went away to college, I came back for over the summer. It was my first year. And uh, it was a Sunday afternoon. We all got home from church. We're all chilling. And all of a sudden, like about two o'clock in the afternoon, everyone just like all of a sudden leaps off the couches. They're throwing on gear and yelling and running out the door. And I'm just like literally sitting there going, what just happened? Like, (laughs) what? Where did they they come back a few hours later? Oh, we had Taekwondo practice. I was like, oh, okay. They were like, it's a family membership. Did you want to come? And I was like, well, it's better than sitting around here alone. So I went and started. I just took my first class there and. Just kind of thought I'd always wanted to do it, so I fell in love with it, just kept doing it and doing it, and um, worked as hard as I could when I was there. And then when I went off to college, my instructors just told me, hey, Steph, if, um, if you practice and you come back and we can see a difference, mm-hmm. even though you won't technically have enough class hours, we'll test you to the next rank. And so that's what they did for four years. They just, every time I came back, they were like, well, you look better. It looks like you improved. You fixed this and this and this. Let's test you to the next So rank. you picked up where you left off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they just, I mean, I, so when I went to college the first time, I was an orange belt and I practiced everything I knew to practice. I had a little textbook that um, was translated from Korean, probably by Google Translate. And it was right. terrible translation. <laughs> <laughs> You're guessing it. Like, what does it mean? Turn right foot inwards and land on heel. Huh? What? Um, but this is before uh, YouTube, right? There, yeah, yeah there was yeah. not very many YouTube videos out there for this one. Um, they did, they did show up about like as I was going through, but not at the very beginning. And so I came back, and they tested me to green belt, and then you know at the end of winter break, they tested me to blue. I went away. I came back. They tested me to purple, and then they tested me, like it just. We just kept moving through the ranks till. Now my whole family of nine were like all black belts. It's hilarious. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay, I want to continue, and I've got a big question for you as okay. it applies to everyone listening right now as we get ready for the new year. When we continue with Stephanie Schiller, the disruptive growth designer. Sunny Radio, SunnyRadio.com. We're brought to you by Ideal Precision Roofing in San Antonio. Now, you've probably heard me say that Ideal Precision is an Owens Corning Platinum Preferred Contractor. Let me tell you what that means. First of all, only 1% of contractors in the country have this designation. And here's the criteria. It includes a good standing with the Better Business Bureau, no bankruptcy filings within the last seven years, operated under the same business name for a minimum of three years, received a Dun & Bradstreet credit rating, possesses at least a million dollars in general liability insurance and carries all the required state and local licensing and insurance. That's the peace of mind you get from Ideal Precision Roofing. So don't trust your roof to anyone else. Let their expert come out and take a look at your roof like hundreds of other homeowners in the San Antonio area have done for years. 
idealprecisionroofing.com or call them at 210-485-1553. That's 210-485-1553 for Ideal Precision Roofing. You're listening to The Sonny Melendrez Show. Sonny's email address is sonny at sunnyradio.com. Stephanie Scheller is the disruptive growth designer. And by the way, you're going to find out all about Stephanie, her official website, and all of the other sites that she's got, and the, uh, the b- big event that she's got coming up in the, uh, in the next month, matter of fact, in mm-hmm. January. Yeah. And uh, you'll find that all at sunnyradio.com slash show. We'll give you the, uh, the address again in the uh, end of the show. So, Stephanie, you have so many people that you inspire to tell their story. You tell them how to tell their story. What happens after they leave your stage? Uh, have you had success stories that have, you know, that have kind of changed their lives as a result of having known you? We do. So, you know, there's a couple of people. And it's not always the people who are on the stage, too. I mean, we get a lot of success stories from people in the audience, which is really, to me, that's exciting, right? That you can come and sit in the audience and actually do something with what you learned and make a change. And um, we've had people who have been, I mean, I had one lady who came to me, she said, Steph, this was literally like last ditch effort. Like I was going to shut the business down the day after your event. I don't know why I decided to pay $3,000 and attend an event the day before I was going to shut the company down. Um, She was like, but I just figured, you know, at this point, may as well. And, um, and she she cries every time she tells the story. I might cry here in a second, but she's like, I, you have no idea the impact you made. We were, we were going bankrupt. And um, not only have they paid off like 50% of the debt that they were carrying from the previous three years, um, she's, she's gotten sober. She's so much happier. Um, and they are, I mean, they're thriving. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me because sometimes I don't realize – the impact I'm having until I, I was watching her. She was introducing me at an event I was speaking at, and she just started crying on stage. She was like, guys, I can't tell you how amazing this lady has been, um, but I definitely wouldn't be here without her. And that just that just straight up blew me away. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I, I, what I love about the format, and you were talking about this before we went on the air, uh, of the uh, the events that you have mm-hmm. is that they're now there used to be one day event right now it's two day event right because I spoke at the first one yes. th- that you had yep. uh, and not only that but you get right to the nitty gritty yeah. on the first day explain that yeah so what I love about this event is we break it out so day one is what we call our ideation day right so all these speakers are getting on stage and they're all presenting this totally different unique concept, right? A lot of times, again, this is stuff that has not been seen anywhere else. Mm. And so they're getting on stage, they're presenting this idea. They're talking about like, you know, Jesse Cole, get on stage and talk about how do you yellow tux your business? Or what is yellow tuxing your business? What is it? Right. So yellow, think about that, right? Have you ever seen a yellow tuxedo? No. Right. They're they're, they're like nowhere. But if you did, let's say you were at a wedding Everyone's in black except right. for, you know, this one guy in a banana yellow tuxedo, right? <laughs> <laughs> it stands out in a big way. And so that is what Jesse – so Jesse's the owner of the Savannah Bananas, which is a baseball team. And they are the only baseball team that ha- in their league that has not only sold out every single game for the past two and a half years. Now, they've only been around for three years. They sold out every game for two and a half years, and they have a wait list that is thousands of people deep. And so he talks about how did we do that? How did we get in an industry, baseball, that is not exactly the one that everyone gets excited about, right? Sure, especially with a small team. Right, right. You know, it's a Coastal Plains League team. It's, it's you know, this is, not, this is not minor leagues, major leagues. Like, this is it's baseball. And he's like, how did we get to the point where we have turned into a nationwide phenomenon, and that is yellow tux in your business, is how do you stand out and draw people into you, right? So he'll talk about this yellow tux your business concept from multiple angles because there are – you got a, you got a yellow tux for the customers, you got a yellow tux for your employees, and you got a yellow tux for yourself. And so then on day two, Jesse comes back and he runs a two-hour workshop where he's actually nitty-gritty walking you through step-by-step step, how do you yellow tux your business. And is he taking people who are – in the audience, in the audience. bringing them up, and, yeah. and and actually, it's Act- almost like everybody gets to watch this incredible session that's yeah. going on. But at the same time, they're getting the benefit 
of this one-on-one yep. Uh, exchange. Yeah, and he'll do it with like three or four people. So three or four of the, you know. So what we'll do is, it's a hundred seats. We don't. This is the grow retreat is not a big event, so uh, we keep it fairly small. And so you know, he'll take three or four of his, the people who sit in his workshop because um, we have two workshops that run at once. So you know, that's almost ten percent of the room is actually going to get the chance to get you know yellow tux with right. Jesse right there, which is just awesome. you know when you were describing the event, it sounds like a um, a TED event for business. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly – that's a perfect way to start it Because you've up. got the ideas worth sharing right. aspect of it, mm-hmm. but the fact that it's all under the umbrella of, of growing your business. Right. And uh, d- do you have people who go in there and – you talked about this lady who was in really dire straits, almost about to close her business, but maybe changes gears, somebody who changes gears along the way and think, I'm going to do this instead? Yeah. So we actually had one lady who was in the room that very first year who at the end of the event was like – yeah, I don't actually want to own a business. And she <laughs> sold her business and she got a job working for a company. And she's like, I am so happy. I love this so much more of my speed. And we see that. We see, I've seen, we had another lady who attended last year. She sold the one business because she was like, yeah, never mind. This is not what I'm, and she opened a one that she's actually really loving and thriving with now. And so, yeah, we see that all, which is hilarious I, like to me because it's, the event is really aimed at business owners who are established, right? It's sure. not supposed to be for startups who are trying to figure out what they're doing, but we still have people who are like, oh, yeah, light bulb. <laughs> yeah, I, I can understand that. I yep. can understand that because there's, there's so many people who are, they go their whole life doing one thing and then realize at a certain point that it really wasn't something that's been fulfilling. And, yeah. and now they have an opportunity to change course yeah. and, and do something else. What are the, what's the, the first mistake or the biggest mistake mm-hmm. that uh, business owners make? when they're trying to, to grow their business? Mm, I think uh, that's a really good question. I think one of, the, one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of times is business owners trying to figure out what's the right question to ask before asking it, right? So business owners have this, especially small business owners, right? Kind of this, I have to figure it out on my own type of perspective. And um, they, people all the time, you know, Stephanie, I'll be in touch as soon as I know what question to ask. I'm like, sometimes you need to reach out when you don't know which question to ask, Mm. right? Sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with reaching out for help. Um, Someone reached out to me last night, a colleague of mine reached out and was like, I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to kill somebody. Could you please talk me off the ledge? (laughs) I was like, sure. Um, But we, we have this idea we can't reach out for help or that if we are going to reach out for help. I mean, when I was starting the business, I would wait to call my coach and like, in the, in the back of my head, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to fix this problem. So when I tell him I had the problem and I fixed it, he'll be proud of me, right? But then, of course, you end up further in the hole because if you could fix the problem on your own, you probably right. wouldn't have it. And uh, I did this for, I don't know, three years before I finally realized I was doing that. And I was like, oh, I really got to stop doing that. Yeah. And, and I see so many other business owners do the same thing. Like, I'm going to fix the problem first and then I'm going to reach out for help. Which, you know, if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'll put the fire out, and then I'll call the fire department. Right, exactly. That's exactly, exactly what it is. All right, so I'm <laughs> curious. I want to get your take on this. Yeah. We hear a lot about branding these days. What does that mean to you, and how important is it? It is massively important. You know, people pay for a good brand. If you have a well-established brand, you can charge more. You have an easier time getting customers. Um, You can spread yourself further. You can grow faster. So you do need a a well-designed and well-established brand. But I think people forget that your brand is more than your logo or your colors or your slogan, right? Your brand is literally every touch point that is hitting the marketplace. So how you answer the phone or don't is a part of your brand. You know, your your signature on your email is part of your brand. Uh, the way you show up, if you show up on time or if you show up just on time and harried and hurried and rushed, mm-hmm. um, you know, every little thing is a piece of that brand. And this is something people, they don't think about. So we have this really great kind of revelation Um, earlier in the year. Um, So if you think about events, a lot of times people don't want to go to events because they're afraid they won't do anything with the information they learn. Because a lot of events are just fire hose, right? Like, here's a ton of info. 
take your little badge back, stick it on your desk, be proud that you went, and don't change anything in your business. Um, and so a lot of times people are like, oh, I can't go. I don't, I don't want to go because I'm not going to pay three grand to not do anything with that info. And we realized that we were actually partially unintentionally perpetuating that idea. So one of the things we started doing with all of our events, all, we have this really cool swag bag we give out. And up until this year, we have always bought a copy of all the speaker's books and put them in the bag because it's a no-pitching event environment. So mm-hmm. I don't even want our, our attendees Great. to feel like they need to go buy the book, right? Sure. I want them to have it. And so we've always bought – so with, you know, you end up with five or six books in the bag. And on site, everyone's super excited about it. Oh, this is awesome. This is great. They get everybody to sign their books. They're so happy. And then they go home and they take their books and they put them on the bookshelf and they don't do anything with right. them. Right. And I had this like aha moment of like, oh, my gosh, that is my brand. That's a touch point of my brand is this was really cool in the moment and now I'm not doing anything with it. And so we said, okay, we still want to give away books, but we got to find a way to do this in a way that people are going to read it and do something with it. So we changed up how we're giving away the books this year so that people will take ownership of doing something with the content. That is part of your brand. Like it's the nuances that make the brand. What did you change? So they're actually going to have to request which books they want this year. So oh, really? it's a psychological trigger, right? If I tell you I want a copy of your book, I'm going to go read your book, right? If I just walk up and I'm like, here, Sonny, read my book. You're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> right? Now, are well, some of these would. books online or audiobooks? Um, there are audiobooks or online versions available, but a lot of them are actually hard copies. What what is your take on on an actual hard copy book? If if, if somebody is is uh, getting ready to maybe has always had a, a book in mind that they want to that they want to write or even have a ghostwriter write, uh, would you suggest a hard copy or an online copy or both? I would recommend both because what we're finding and what I found for me personally is so I will listen to the book on Audible. And then I'll have a hard copy of the book, right? So I listen to the book while I'm driving. I have a hard copy of the book at home that I go home. I flip through the pages. I find the phrase that I liked or the exercise I want to do. I highlight it. I bookmark it. And then I can find it to do it, whereas it's really hard to do that on audio. So I actually think they're both really, really important. That's brilliant. That's brilliant because you're right. It goes into your brain, and now it's going, it's, it's going into the hard drive. Right, exactly. As opposed to just the, uh, the random access. Uh, memory. Uh, so you have really um, inspired a lot of people, and I'm I'm so inspired by you, and and proud of you, uh, and so happy that you uh, you sought out to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate uh, it. What advice would you have to say, Stephanie Schiller, three years ago when I first met you? Oh, okay. So this is one of my big revelations from this year. Um, I'm sure you've heard that uh, that African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And everyone's told me that. My coach has been telling me that for five years. And every time someone would tell it to me, I'd be like, uh-huh. yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, in my head, I'm like, no, I'm going to go fast and far alone. And I would hire team members. I've had team members forever, but I would never really, like, actually put stuff on them. Mm. And earlier this year, someone said something. He said, you know, how dare you? How dare you deprive people? You've seen the stories that are coming out of what you're doing. How dare you hold yourself back by insisting on doing it all yourself? That is powerful. It knocked me over. And all I could think was, oh, my gosh. Like, that made me feel terrible. It was like, I think of the people that, you know, the past three years, I could have had so much bigger reach if I leaned on my team instead of feeling like I had to do it all myself. And that I would definitely tell Stephanie three years ago that. (laughs) Well, you certainly got it three years later. Right, three years later. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Definitely. Thank you so much. This is so great. And I look forward to uh, many more conversations in the very near future. Oh, me too, Sonny. Me too. God bless you. God bless. Well, that's my visit with my good friend, Stephanie Schiller. You'll find more about her Grow Retreat and the amazing things that she's doing with businesses large and small and individuals just like you by visiting SunnyRadio.com slash show. That's SunnyRadio.com slash show. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss a single episode. Until next time, I'm Sonny Melendrez, and I leave you with the words of the African proverb that Stephanie shared. If you want to go fast... Go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Bye-bye.